praise God. This morning we are grateful to the Lord for giving us a new day and another nice day when we are continuing learning about the fruit of the Holy Spirit. And uh, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning with thanksgiving in our hearts. We are grateful you've taken care of us throughout this week. You've been with us in our houses, even as we went out and came back, oh God, you've been good to us. We repent our sins, oh God, we pray that you may cleanse us with the blood of Jesus Christ, that we may be acceptable before you and we may continue enjoying being in your presence because you tell us that in your presence there is fullness of joy. Lord, we come before you and we commit ourselves even as we listen to your word, O oh God. We pray that it is going to have a place in our hearts and it is going to help us learn how you want us to obey you and even walk in your ways, O oh God. We thank you that we have been learning about the fruits of the Holy Spirit. We've learned about love, joy, and peace. And today, as we learn about patience, oh Lord, we pray that you're going to give us that patience so that we may go through out the, serv the, the service, oh God, and even the remaining fruit, oh God, we are, we'll be able to have the patience to learn all of them to the end, oh God. We commit ourselves to you. We pray that you may help us understand and even get closer to you as we obey you through the fruit of patience. We worship you and we honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We thank God for this morning in our class. Today we are going to learn about the fourth fruit of the Holy Spirit. The fourth fruit of the Holy Spirit is patience. As it is in Galatians 5, 22 to 23. I don't know if you remember how we sang this as a song, the memory verse of Galatians 5, 22 to 23. Can we all join in together and sing Galatians 5, 22 to 23? This is how we've been doing it. Galatians 5, 22 to 23, Galatians chapter 5, and the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, humility, and self control. And so today we are on the fourth fruit. The fourth fruit is patience. If we look at the word patience, we would, we would want to look at each letter, and this is how we look at it. P will start for prayer, and A will start for amidst. T will stand for testing or turmoil. I starts for injects. E stands for endurance. N stands for newness, C stands for Christ Jesus, and E stands for end. This, if said in a, in a line, is how we put it. That prayer amidst testing or turmoil injects in us endurance, newness of faith in Christ Jesus to the end. Uh, the meaning of patience. Patience is the capacity to accept or tolerate delay, problems, suffering, anxiety, without, okay, without suffering, without becoming angry or anxious. So you tolerate so many things because you know what you are aiming at. Patience comes hand in hand with waiting. If you're waiting for something, of course you have to wait for something that you, are, you do not have. You're waiting for your parent to give you a, a, a gift. You're waiting to pass your exams. You're waiting to build a house. So if, when you're in the waiting process, you need patience. Because without patience, you'll, gi you'll give up. As you're waiting... You need patience. Just like David said in uh, Psalms 40 verse 41, that I waited patiently for the Lord's help. Then he listened to me and he heard my cry. 
David was trusting God. He was in problems and he trusted God would see him through. So David waited patiently upon the Lord. So whenever you mention the word patience, it goes hand in hand with waiting. Waiting and patience are like twins. You can't wait without patience and you can't have patience if you're not waiting for something that you need or you do not have. So as we look at today's lesson, we are going to have these two intertwined because none can do without the other. If you do not have the patience to wait, then it means you give up and you cannot get to fulfill your goals. As we look at today's lesson, we look at the sample fruit of a, an apple. Why I chose the apple is because apples help in, the immun in, in boosting the immunity. Like they'll add vitamin C, vitamin B. They have so many um, added, they, they add so much in our health so that they, they, they like control the, our BP, they control the cholesterol, they take care of our heart, the blood sugar is taken, I mean, the, it's lowered and the diabetes also is lowered. So the apple has lots of uh, health values to our bodies. When we look at this fourth fruit of the Holy Spirit as an apple, I would want us to look at it like we have, we have the, the first fruit, which is love, then we have joy and peace. But we have patience at the center of the apple. Why we have patience at the center is because when you have joy, you can't have joy unless you've been patient. You can't have peace unless you've been patient. You can't have humility unless you've been patient. So patience spreads to all these other fruits. Just the same way, if you have goodness at the center, it will spread to all the other fruits. So each fruit is dependent on the other fruit. When you have the apple fruit, it supports our immunity system. Then the patient's fruit supports our waiting process. An apple a day keep the doctor out, keeps the doctor away. So it takes care of our physical health. Waiting for the Lord patiently daily keeps us closer to God. That takes care of our spiritual health. Psalms 37 verse 7 says, Be patient and wait upon the Lord. So when we are patient and we wait upon the Lord, he'll not disappoint us. He'll come and he'll help us move on. Our lesson comes from the book of John chapter 5 verse 1 to 8. John chapter 5 verse 1 to 8. The healing at the pool, and we read. Sometime later, Jesus went up to Jerusalem for one of the Jewish festivals. Now there is in Jerusalem near the sheep gate a pool, which in Aramaic is called Bethsida, and which is surrounded by five covered colonnades. Here, a great number of disabled people used to lie, the blind, the lame, the paralyzed. One who was there had been an invalid for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and learned that he had been in this condition for a long time, he asked him, do you want to get well? Sir, the invalid replied, I have no one to help me into the pool when the water is stirred. While I'm trying to get in, someone else goes down ahead of me. Then Jesus said to him, get up, pick up your mat and walk. And at once, the man was cured 
he picked up his mat and walked. I would want us to look at this story as a process. We have the man who was at the pool, an invalid for 38 years. So he's, he was sick for 38 years. Assuming he was 10 years old when he got sick. That is to say, he had 10 years when he was well, and then he had another 38 years when he was sick. So by the time he's 38, by the time he's 48, he's been sick for 38 years. That is very sad. One thing I like about this man is that he never lost hope. His process started when he started thinking like, I do not want to, con to continue just being here like a, like a sick person. I really want to get well. So he was psyched by getting well, wanting to get well, and wanting to move on. And so that is how he ended up being at the pool. At the pool, Many of the disabled people, those who are sick, those who could not be able to do anything for, on their own, they went to this pool. There was a catch here. The person who was first to get to the pool, inside the pool, is the one who used to get better. And then all the others have to wait until tomorrow. When the water was still, the angel would come, he would stir the water, and then one of them would get in. So the fastest one is the one who would get in. Let us look at it from this diagram, the waiting process. In our current state, like this man at the pool, he was sick. So he had to make a decision. Like wait, in the waiting process, we have to make a decision. Do I want to be well or am I okay? So if I'm okay, then nitaka to Ivo, I go back to my state because I decide I'm okay, I put a full stop. Nothing else can happen to me beyond being sick. I can only get back into my, into my shell and just stay there, waiting for people to help me or even just giving up and lying there. So that is the end result. But if I decide at a, a sick or sour, I'm not okay, I really need help. Because I'm sick, I need help. I want to move out, I want to go and get well, so... The minute I decide that I'm feeling I'm not well, so what do I do? I want to get well. So I set, I set a goal of getting well. When I set my goal of getting well, what do I, what do I, how do I achieve it? I'm setting my goal with, with hope. Then by faith, I set my, or I identify the means by which I can get well. It's only through treatment. So I go, I know I should move out, go and get treated. This is what this man decided, that he was not well and there was help at the pool. And he decided to go to the, he was taken to the pool because we understand he was just lying there. And it is like he was seriously Disabled because whenever he was trying to go, as he says, whenever he was trying to go to the pool, somebody else would come behind him and just overtake him, get into the pool first. And he had to retreat and wait again for the following day. For 38 years, every day trying to get into the pool and you're not getting any help. I love this man. He never gave up. He continued. He was resilient. He really wanted to get healed. And he was committed to that. He never looked back. He never thought about who should have taken him into the pool. I mean, if he had a friend or a relative or a parent who could hold him and just take him to the pool, he could have been the first. But no one seems to have been close to him to help him out. He, it was all about him and him helping, trying to get help on his own. So after identifying the means, which is treatment, what was he supposed to do? Is take action. Did he take action? Yes, he did. What did he do? He went, he was waking up and trying to go to the pool. Though he was not getting there as the first person, but he kept trying and trying and trying. For him, 
We thank God because when Jesus came, because at this point, this is where Jesus came in for him and asked him, do you want to get well? And he gave Jesus the story. He was like saying, yes, Lord, I want to get well. But you see, whenever I wake up, whenever I stand, whenever I, whenever I try to go to the, to the pool, no, I don't get there fast. Somebody overtakes me and they get into the pool and they are healed. I remain and I retreat back to where I was. I wait for the following death for the angel to come. And Jesus realized this man had been there for a long time. So what did Jesus do? He just told him, get up. Pick up your mat and walk. He saw the kind of faith that was in this man. And this man was so happy. I can imagine now he walked. He really didn't have to go back into the pool. He did, he did not have to look at any other thing but to look up to Jesus. What is this telling us? That now Jesus came in and became the bridge or he implemented the desire of this man of wanting to get well. When this man got well, he achieved his end result, which was originally his goal. So when we set our goals here, and we go through identifying the means by which we achieve them, and then we go take action by implementing our means, then we trust God to give us good results. So when we get the good results, they should be equal to the goals that we set. That is to say, we have succeeded. That is how this man su succeeded. On our part, let's say you're a student, because I'm sure most of us are students, maybe either, in, either in primary school or in secondary school. So when you are a student, that is your current state. What do you want? If you feel you're okay, me, me, yata nikisoma ama nikae, I'm okay. Then that is the, your, your ed. But if you feel, no, I'm not okay. I would want to graduate so that I get a good job. What do you do? Then you start thinking, what do I do in order to graduate? I have to learn. The learning process what is required of you to do? You, are, you should go to school, you, you study, you do your revision well. That is how you get to do your exams and you pass. So, especially the implementation part, where you have to go to school, you have to study. You buy all the materials you need to assist you in order to pass. You take all your time instead of going to be your, with your friends out there you just want to be in your home or in the library studying so that you can pass your exams, then if you do not sacrifice at the implementation stage seriously, you may find yourself getting back without having achieved your goal. So, But when you invest your time and all your energies in your studies and you do your exams, then you pass you are assured of graduation. And the minute you graduate, then you have achieved your goal. And you not be like the person or the student who felt, Mr. Kikusoma was as one who sawa. You know, when your parents are okay, it's not you who is okay. Because at some point, you also be a parent. So do you want somebody who will come there and purely rely on you? Or do you want to be supported to do your studies? And as you do your studies, you also graduate, you get a good job, and you also support others. That is up to you to decide. We said waiting process, it's a matter of a decision. You have to make a decision. Do you want to wait or not? If you want to wait. The whole process of waiting requires patience. David waited patiently upon the Lord. And you know David was not lacking in anything. David had everything. So, Waiting patiently does not mean that you just sit there. You wait patiently, you pray, you have hope, you have faith, and you also trust in God. Because our energies and all our dedication to doing things may not amount to anything if we do not dedicate the whole process to God. 
So we have to wait patiently upon God so that he may come and help us to move on. I'll give you another example. What happens when you're hungry? You want to eat food and there is no food that is ready. You have to wait for, the fo- for somebody to come, buy the food, prepare it and cook. And when it's ready, that is when you eat it. But you cannot say because the potatoes are there, you'll just eat when they are raw because you're hungry. You have to wait. Wait for them to be prepared, cooked, and then you are served or you serve yourself. So that is another example of a waiting process. What happens to us, by the way, when our parents promise us something? So my parent will tell me, I'm happy with you and I'm going to buy you a new dress or some shoes or I'm going to take you out. Then, that is just a promise. We have to wait until it is accomplished by our parents. Our parents have to wait until they have the money to do what they promised to us. So, do you wait until evening? And then the, your mom comes and you're like, okay, mom, you promised. You said you're taking me. You said you were. You said you're buying me something and you've not yet done it. Do you, do you start feeling that somebody has left, let you down just because they have not yet uh, they have not yet met their promises? No, 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 no. You need patience. Wait. Even if they had said it's tomorrow and it was not done tomorrow, something might have held them back. Wait as you pray. If mom didn't buy me shoes to, today and she had promised me since last week or on my birthday they pro- promised they would take me out or they would buy me a cake and it was not done. That is to say they had the will to do it but by the time it, it, uh, your birthday Uh, your birthday date has come, they didn't have the money. That is a means to treat you. So what do you do? You're supposed to pray. You, You wait as you pray. Pray for them. Pray for God to give them a financial breakthrough so that they can be able to support you with the promise that they have given you. When we look at what patience does to us, when we wait patiently, patience leads to satisfaction or fulfillment. For example, you become successful, you get healing, you are renewed, you get abundance of whatever you required, you have peace, you have joy, you get safety, and if it's a farmer, you harvest. If you look at a farmer, when they want, what, when they are setting their goals, their goal is that they would want to harvest and have a bountiful harvest. So when they are identifying their means, they know their means is through planting. But you can't plant unless you've bought the seeds, you've prepared the land. So they take the action of looking for the money to maybe get a shamba, then you start planting, you, 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 you look for the seeds, you buy the seeds, and then you till the land, you plant, you tend the plants, and then you harvest. So when you get the harvest, that is the end result. And it is equal to the, you, the, the goal that you had set. Of course, you feel so happy. You feel so fulfilled because you have, you have achieved your goal. Let us look at patience when we lack patience. What happens when you do not have patience? Lack of patience leads us to failure. Like I showed you here, when you're in a, your current state, either you're sick or you're a student or you're a farmer, you're a tenant, you want to have a house, you're a sinner, you'd want to get saved. If you decide Nikosawa or I'm okay, then you leave it at that. So if you're a tenant, utakatu, 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 kutafta pesa rent, maybe you don't get, sometimes you get, you will not change your situation. But if you decide you want to walk all the way and go through the waiting process, then you're sure to harvest. So if we lack patience, this is what happens to us. You become angry. My mother didn't buy this. My dad didn't do this. My sister promised. And you keep on complaining, complaining, complaining. You, re- you, you have regrets. Yeah, my sister is being treated in a better way. You, you, you can, you're always regretting. Why did I not go? Why did I not do? And maybe the time is already gone. Because if you are 30 and you wanted to finish class 8 and you didn't finish, now you cannot go back to school. You're feeling like you're left out. Others have really moved on. 
We also tend to give up. If you lack patience, you'll give up. After setting your goal that you want to graduate and you go to school and you're like, many people are going out to happy out there. So I also want to go with them. Well, the minute you go and you're not concentrating on your, class, on your, on your studies, then you, it's like you have given up. Lack of patience also brings confusion in our lives. It brings disgrace. It gives us hopelessness. We become insecure. We also get aborted desires because our goals are not met. We also have blame games. You start blaming your brother, you start blaming your friend, you start blaming somebody who maybe introduced you to drugs. You start complaining and blaming everyone around you, even your parents. And they did the best they could do for you. You may not have been in the best school, but they did the, the best they could do for you. They took you even to that day school that you were going to. You, start, you also start to, have, to, to experience wasted investments because your parents had already put so much money in your education, yet you, you just leave it because you didn't finish, you, you didn't have the patience to go to the last step. And you become a disgrace to yourself and to the people around you, including your parents. The process of waiting patiently, patiently is guided by the end result. So, as we wait patiently, in the process of waiting patiently, we go through storms. You know, the waiting process is just that, it's not just that you just be there waiting. You apply patience because there will be suffering. Like now when you're sick, you, you'll need to go take your medication. Some of the medication may be very bitter pills that you're swallowing. If you don't swallow those bitter medications, or maybe it's an injection that you have to go attend and get every day, every, every day for the next five days or for the next two weeks. Or maybe like if you are diabetic, you're, going like, you're, you're injecting yourself every day for the next month, few months. That is a very painful process. And you may feel at some point like you, you just don't want to go through it. No. Go through it because you know the end result. The suffering will endure just for a short time. The short time may be a day. It may be a week. It may be a month. It may be a year. It may be more. This man suffered for 38 years, but he still got his goal of getting well. He did. After 38 years. I am sure you're not even half of that age, some of you. Maybe you're not even, I mean, an eighth of that age. So why should you give up? If, if this man never gave up, the man at the pool, if he never gave up, why should you give up? In the process of waiting, we said there'll be suffering. There'll be pain. There'll also be rejection. People will reject you because they'll be like, hey, why, why, this, why, why, why should... So and so just continue waiting, waiting, waiting. We have shortcuts here. We can pass here. Then if you don't join them, they reject you. And so you become lonely. The minute you are rejected, you become lonely. You suffer shame because you're keeping on trying, trying and trying. If you failed your exam today, then you are like, the others just dropped out because they failed. Me, I won't drop out. I'll still try next time and next time until I make it. So you'll suffer shame because they'll be laughing at you. Some maybe have started even other jobs and they are doing better. They'll mock you. Yeah, you also have mockery because people will just start enjoying you. Eh, alikuwa na jiona. Sasa anaendelea tu kurudia. No, 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 no. You are set and you know what you want. Patience, waiting patiently upon the Lord. Patience will keep you strong through the process. And this reminds me of this song that we, we've been singing. It's a chorus. Eh? My only hope is you, Jesus. My only hope is you. From early in the morning till late at night, my only hope is you. All that I need is you, Jesus. All that I need is you. From early in the morning till late at night, all that I need is you. During the waiting process, Jesus will not leave you. He'll walk with you. 
through the storms. He'll hold you. He'll make sure that you get your end results. That is how he held this man. This man was able to go through it and he achieved his goal of getting well. And what do you do as you wait patiently upon the Lord? Pray. Pray is one thing that you cannot do without. Pray without ceasing. As you start setting your goals, where do I want to go? What do I need? Where do I get? How do I get there? Pray. Also, put your faith and your hope in Jesus. Sing praises and worship to the Lord. Seek him by reading his word. Obey God by producing the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Trust God for the end result. Because we cannot make it on our own. We need God in order to make it. I have points for you to note here. As you wait patiently, there are no shortcuts. There are no shortcuts to the process. And that is why the waiting process is there. If you, have, if you take a shortcut, the, the Israelites, they were trying, they, they never took a shortcut. But they went through the process. But God went with them. And that is why he was providing for them at every point he used to provide for them. The other point to note is that in the waiting process, the waiting process has a time frame. You move from the state A through to state Z. It has a time frame. It is not in a vacuum. So you seek, that is point A, and you want to get better, that is point Z. So you have to move from A to Z in order to complete the waiting process. So it comes to an end. You will not be waiting for one thing forever by the grace of God. Also note that if you back out of the waiting process in the middle at any one point, you become a failure and you retreat to your previous state of helplessness. Note also that waiting patiently is an action-packed process. As you're waiting, you're praying, you're, 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 you're also like um, implementing what you identified as the means. So you're not just waiting. If you sit, if you have faith without action, the word of God tells us that faith without action is dead. So you have to be acting, you have to be doing something where you're not really involved in doing anything physically, then you're involved in continuing praying and trusting in God. Our God has always been patient with us. Like we, we, we know, all of us, we know John 3, 16. Jesus came to save us and he remained patient to the end. And so, let us also be patient with our parents, siblings, friends, and teachers, and neighbors. It's the only way we can be like Jesus. And that is how we are able to sing this song that we've always sung in class. I want to be like Jesus. I want to be like Jesus. Deep down in my heart, deep down in my heart, I want to be like Jesus. I want to be like Jesus. Deep down in my heart, deep down in my heart. So deep, deep, so down, down, so deep down in my heart. Let us, let us sing together. I want to be like Jesus, I want to be like Jesus, deep down in my heart, deep down in my heart, I want to be like Jesus, I want to be like Jesus, deep down in my heart, deep down in my heart, so deep, deep, so down, down, so deep down in my heart, so deep, deep, so down, down, so deep down in my heart. We can only be like Jesus if we apply patience. Patience in all that we do. Patience with all the people we meet. Patience with all the people, with, with all the processes that we go through, in, in all the processes that we go through. So, as we finish, I would want us to remember that there are many songs that help us to keep our patience, that help us to focus on God 
as, a, as, we, as we go through the waiting process, like the, there is this song that says, my hope, my hope is built on nothing less by Jesus. We know all this song. My hope looks up to thee, thou Lamb of Calvary. So we have so many songs that we can sing as we wait, yeah? As you praise God, as you wait upon him. That patience will help you wait, wait to the last minute. And the minute we go there, we get the crown of life. God, in his own way, he looked at the state of the world. So that was the current state, that the world was so sinful and he needed to save the world. So his goal was to save the world. When God felt that he needed to save the world, what did he do? He knew that through sacrificing his son, the world would get salvation. So we have God at the top. In the current state, we have the world, the sinning world. And then God feels that this world, Haiko Sawa. So he decides to save the world. From saving the world, he decides to sacrifice his son as the means of achieving the salvation. And the action that was done is to lay Jesus at the cross at Calvary. So Jesus died on the cross as an atonement for our sins. And that is how we got salvation, forgiveness from God. And so God was able to achieve his goal of saving the world by sending Jesus Christ to come and die for us and he rose again. And now seated at the right hand of the Father. So we got salvation. God's goal was salvation and the end result after Jesus died was that Jesus saved us, died to save us. So the minute you repent, you are saved. You've achieved God's goal of saving this world, of saving us as his children. So let us all trust in God. Let us all commit our ways to God and we are going to come out successful by practicing the fruit of the Spirit, which is patience. Fruit number four, the fruit of the Holy Spirit number four is patience. And God will help us with our commitment, with our, with our not giving up. We are going to get uh, good results and we shall be happy and we shall praise God. Let us not forget to thank God because of the good results that he gives us at, after every waiting process. Our Lord can bless us today. Our Lord can bless us today. Our Lord can bless us today. That shows me the way you are. Oh yes, Lord, I love you. Without you, Lord, I am nothing without you, Lord. I am nothing that shows me the way you are. Let us pray. We thank you, Lord, because we know without you, we are nothing. We thank you, Lord, because we know in the waiting process, oh God, as we wait patiently upon you, you never disappoint. And so we commit all our goals to you, all our desires to you, oh God, that you're going to help us wait patiently upon you. And when we get the good results, we shall be careful to thank you. And we shall be happy and even spread the word of how faithful you are and how good you are, oh God. Help us to be patient as we wait for things that are being done for us. Help us to be patient in all that we do, oh God. Help us, oh God, even to be patient, even as we wait for, for you to fulfill, to fulfill our desires, oh God, so that we may come out with a testimony of what you have done for us. For we cannot have a testimony unless we have waited patiently upon you. We thank you and we worship you. Be with us. Continue blessing us. Even as we start this coming week, oh God, those who are in school, may you be with them, oh God. Those who are at home, oh God, children, we pray that you may also bless them and their parents. May you bless the parents going out and coming back and even the guardians, oh God. We continue trusting you for our lives, oh God, and even for better things, oh God. Our parents who are still 
out there not having any jobs, oh God, we pray that you may remember them and that you may uplift them. May you open doors, oh God, for them, that they may be able to take care of us. You are worthy, you are faithful, oh God. We worship you and we honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. God bless you. Oh,